Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, um, let's do one more video today. And then tomorrow I start my two new series. Uh, if you're new to the channel, hello, my name is Connor. I like to learn about history through YouTube recommendations. The original link to the video from Geography Now will be at the top of the description. Of the description, right below that will be the link to the Discord. Just click on it, it'll send you right over there. Love to have you. Pull up a chair, my friend. All right, let's do it. Let's learn about Germany. I've always loved to uh, learn about geography. And I don't know why I haven't reacted uh, to this channel yet. And this is the most popular video on that channel. Good one to start with, Germany. Let's do it. Double check. Good, good. All right. All right. Leader Hosen Schnitzel beer, Bratwurst order bread and beer, complicated history beer, no humor, EDM, and gummy bears that will kind of like give you diarrhea, but it's like worth it. Ugh, those are such horrible stereotypes that every German is so sick and tired of hearing. Want a gummy bear? I do. It's time Why does my voice keep cracking? Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So we've conquered hey, Belgium's castle, jumped through Denmark's lagoon, danced through France's forest, and now we've made it to the final boss of the EU, Kingpin Germany. The Level final one, boss. begin. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. Yep, Germany has a lot of territorial anomalies. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first, Germany is located in central Western Europe, bordered by nine other countries. Don't forget little Luxembourg, with small coasts on the North and Baltic seas, which they own about 50 small islands. Now, Germany, like the US, is a federal republic, which has 16 smaller states, or Bundeslande, each with its own constitution, three of which are cities, the capital Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen, which is actually kind of like two cities, including Bremerhaven on the coast, but they kind of act like one entity. <laughs> Fun side note, Lower Saxony is actually geographically situated further north than regular Saxony. Now let's jump into the fun stuff. Now we already discussed the Jungholz Quadrapoint and the Venban Railway enclaves with Belgium and Austria. However, there's a few more. The entire town of Bussingen am Hochrhein is surrounded by Switzerland, whereas part of the Konstanz is cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by Switzerland. However, immediately across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to Switzerland. Finally, they split the island of Usedom with Poland in the north. Germany is interesting because every state in the country has its own distinct culture, dialect, history, food, traditions. I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schwestlig Holsteiners. Mecklenburg-Pommern will be different from Saarland. This all has to do with ancient and recent history. Basically, in the Empire. quickest way I can summarize this, Germanic tribes, Roman wars, Charlemagne, three kingdoms, this guy marries an Italian, creating a whole new mess called the Holy Roman Empire made up Spoilers. of 300 smaller separate kingdoms, states, and dukedoms, which had nothing to do with Romans. Teutonic Knights, Brandenburgs became Prussia, Habsburgs became Austrians, Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, wars, battles, battles. Napoleon comes over and messes everything up. And finally, German nationalism surges. And in 1871, Otto von Bismarck creates the first proto-German unified state. And then they're all like, oh, dang, we came late to this game. We got to scramble for some colonies. And that's how all of these countries at one point spoke German. Oh, and also keep in mind, like 300 years before this, a German banking company obtained colonial rights to Venezuela for like 20 years. They were looking for the lost city of El Dorado. So technically, you can kind of say El Germans Dorado. colonized the Americas, but it wasn't like a nationalized conquest. Thing. Fast forward even more, and then you get World War One. The monarchy ends, Treaty of Versailles, they lose land, Nazis come in, World War II, Germany splits in two for about 40 years, and then finally, we get the Germany we have today. East Germany consisting of these states is today still quite different from the- This guy's great. Finally, Sorry. we get the Germany we have today. East Germany consisting of these states is today still quite different from the rest of Germany as it was first occupied and influenced by the Soviet Union. Right. They are generally not as well off economically as the rest of the country as you can still see the blocky Soviet style buildings sprawled throughout the regions. In fact, the city of Berlin was split in half and the west side was actually an enclave of West Germany only accessible by train and highway. You can even see from a satellite image the divide. East Berlin still uses the yellowish tinted sulfur vapor light bulbs, whereas the west still uses fluorescent and mercury arc white tinted light bulbs. Now the funny thing is, although Berlin is the largest city in Germany, the busiest airports are actually Frankfurt, Munich, Dusseldorf, with Berlin Tegel ranking at number four. Otherwise, some top notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, the Valhalla, Cologne Cathedral, the Ulminster Church, the tallest in the world, the Berlin Victory Co Cologne Cathedral, I believe. I, tr I just want to check, where's Cologne? In Cologne, Germany. Okay, yes, I drove through there, um, me and my dad and brother, uh, from Amsterdam down, okay, alright, I thought that was familiar. 
column and hundreds and hundreds of castles all over the most notable one probably being Neuschwanstein the concept behind Disney's Cinderella look at that Cinderella Castle Germany also has over four notable one probably being Neuschwanstein the concept behind Disney's Cinderella Castle Germany also has over 400 zoos more than any other country in the world and of course everybody knows about the Autobahn the highway system in which if you see this sign it means there's no speed limit and it's like that for a huge portion of the roadway and no wonder considering how vast and wide those cultivated countrysides can get look how beautiful level that two. is Okay, think of it this way. In Germany, the more down you go, the more up you move. Basically, Germany lies on the Atlantic shelf in the sense. north that starts with the mud flats in the North Sea. Seriously, this island right here is accessible only for a few hours by foot until the tide comes and floods everything. Then everything just kind of creeps up into the Alps in the south by Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, with the highest mountain, Zugspitze, located right along the border with Austria. Kind of like France, Germany is filled with a vast irrigating network of- Trying to pause too much, but I remember, I'll never forget driving from Munich down into Austria was one of the most beautiful scenic areas I have ever seen. Switzerland was extremely nice too. I'm learning a lot already. Of rivers like the Spree, Elbe, Vesa, Rhine, and of course the mighty Danube that starts here. About a third of the land is arable and another third is woodland. And after a millennia of civilization, Very Germans have cultivated the crap out of their country. Most agriculture, of course, happens in the north flat plains and the central regions of the country, which is, by the way, kind of like Europe's tornado alley, due to its position sandwiched between the Arctic blasts of Scandinavia and the moist, warm jet streams of the Mediterranean below. Germany can be an atmospheric war zone in the summer. There are more tornadoes on average in Germany than any other country in Europe. Europe. Speaking of flat farmland, really? Germany is the world's largest rye and hop producer. Germans absolutely freaking lutely love their bread. There are over 300 different kinds of bread in the country, more types than any other country in the world, and almost every meal incorporates some kind of slice or small bun or brötchen of bread. Hast du gluten free? Nein! Germans are heavy meat eaters, specifically in pork. They basically know every possible way to cook a pig. Over 50 different types of sausage exist alongside schnitzels, rouladen, sauerbraten, schweinsachse, and at a big party you might find Spanfacker. Beer reigns supreme all over as the third largest consumers of beer after the Czech Republic, even their president has no problem with public intoxication, and Austria. <laughs> Germany is world really? renowned for their beer, which by the way follows the Reinheitsgebot rule in which they are only allowed to use water, hops, malt, and sometimes yeast. Nonetheless, about 1,300 breweries exist, pumping why? out over 5,000 brands. The oldest continuously existing brewery in the world, started by Benedictine monks in 1040 AD, can be found here. Germany takes the environment very seriously by Benedictine monks in 1040 the AD can be found here. Germany takes the environment very seriously and for the past two decades has been going on a major green revolution. As of today, they have the largest installed so many solar power capacity are... and green infrastructure practices like home installed turbines and solar panels have seen a huge surge in the past 10 years. Forests dominate the southern regions where the landscape gets hillier. My God, he's going so... I I love when, in, you know, when it goes fast and everything, but I just want to say for a small country, it... Well, it's big in... in um, I mean, when you're in the U.S., you tend to think of, you know, Canada, Mexico, U.S., which are pretty big countries, all three of them. And so compared to over here, I understand it's pretty big uh, in Europe, but for a small country, it is very diverse, it seems. Like, there's a lot to it, a lot of different environments and all that, which is very cool and mountainous, the most famous one being the Black Forest or the Schwarzwald in Baden-Württemberg. Deer, bears, boar, foxes, badgers, and the national animal, the eagle, can be found thriving in these parts. Nonetheless, economically, Germany is known mostly for their exceptional engineering and industry production. Companies we've all heard of like Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Benz, Porsche, Audi, Telecom, Nivea, DHL, Bosch, Adidas, Puma, Adidas, Puma! Yeah, it's kind of like the whole Biscoito Bolacha thing from Brazil, remember? Well, we have mud flats, tornadoes, pork, beer, mountains, I'll All that's Brazil missing is people. Too. Level three. Fun little side note, in Germany, this is three, not this. Now, if the EU was a family, Germany would kind of be like the dad who got out of rehab, reconciled with his wife and kids, and is taking his new life very seriously as he is haunted by the demons of his past every day. First of all, the country has about 82 million people and is the most populated in the EU, second most in Europe after Russia, and has the fourth largest nominal GDP in the world. But... What? Uh, Japan. Must be three, because you think of U.S., China, 
So is Japan number three. 80% of the country identifies as ethnically German, 12% other Europeans, mostly Polish, Italian, Dutch, and so on. Turks make up about 3.5%, Asians at 2%, and the rest are made up of other groups like Africans and Americans. Also, they use the Euro, they use the C and F type outlets, and they drive in the right The side. outlets, the outlets were crazy too. It's the road. Germany is without a doubt a global powerhouse. It is the C and F type outlets and they drive on the right side of the road. Germany is without a doubt a global powerhouse. It is the strongest economy in the EU and makes up about 16% of the union's population. It's the third largest exporter and importer of goods in the world. After the United States, Germany is also the second most popular global migration destination. Germany experiences a high standard of living, tuition-free universities, if you get accepted that is, a mostly government subsidized universal healthcare system, about a quarter is still privatized, and state pension for retirement at age 65. Now, when it comes to language, things get a little tricky. Why don't we get tuition-free university over here? I don't know the complexities of, you know, the American economics, I guess, to uh, know exactly why. Each state kind of has their own type I for trust retirement uncles. at age 65. Now, when it comes to language, things get a little tricky. Each state kind of has their own type of German. However, to get by, most Germans learn how to speak Hochdeutsch, or High German, which is the standard dialect. The European Charter, however, protects the minority languages of Frisian, Danish, Romani, Sorbian, which is like a Slavic-based language used along the Czech-Polish border, and Plattdeutsch, or Low German, which has similarities to Dutch and is typically used by the Amish and Mennonite communities across the world. In terms of regional distinctions, though, Germany is kind of divided into five cultures cultural areas, Rhineland, East and Middle Deutschland, North Deutschland, Baden-Württemberg, and Bavaria. Rhineland is on the west side and has a culture oh, look somewhere- look at that castle. I would love- can you visit any Germans out there? Can you visit these castles? Or are they sort of off limits? More influenced by France, more Catholics, Carnival celebrations are huge out here. East and Middle Germany was the part that used to be its own country for 40 years as it was influenced by the Soviets. Sorbians can also be found here too. Northern Germany has a coastal sea culture that identifies closer with Denmark and the Netherlands. They are also known for being kind of quiet and reserved. Baden-Württemberg has an interesting Swabian culture where they speak a dialect so thick that only about 40% of it is intelligible to other Germans. And then you have Bavaria, which is where the Americanized perpetuated stereotypes about Germany came from with Lederhosen, Dirndl's, Half Timber, Beer Houses, and Cuckoo Clocks. For the record, Germans are sick of those stereotypes. It's like saying all Americans are cowboys with guns and horses. Speaking of stereotypes, some of the stereotypes in Germany include things like Saxons being very indecisive, Berliners are always bragging about themselves, Swabians are stingy, Bavarians... So Berliners are the New Yorkers of Germany? Is that... Of course, I'm going to be relating to American cities, so drank too much, Hessians talk too much, Holsteiners don't talk enough, and so on. Words differ from regions too. For example, in High German, you would say Auf Wiedersehen, but in Bavarian, you would say Fiat die Gott. In Kölsch, you would say Tschüss, and in Rhineland, you might say Ayus. And there's so I many mean, compound words to get really long and complicated, like Rindfleischetiketierungsüberwachungsaufgabenübertragungsgesetz. I got this, guys. Rindfleischetiketierungsüberwachungsaufgabenübertragungsgesetz. <laughs> this is because many words are mertudig, or ambiguous words, that are kind of elongated to give off an extensive meaning. Germans have very vivid imaginations and make up words for everything. Like my favorite word, backpfeifengesicht. I'm just thinking of Not Dwight. this time. <laughs> By the way, for the record, the this office. letter makes a double S sound. However, spelling reformers have tried to decrease the usage of this letter in recent years, which has led to some protests. Germans also love dubbing everything from foreign media into German. Some like this, some don't, but either way, it's here to stay. About 60% of the country identifies at least nominally as Christians split between Protestants and Catholics. Germany was even the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation split from the Catholic Church. I just learned about that in a Legia video. Check it out. A few other videos too. By Martin Luther. Otherwise, Sorry. Germany was even the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation split from the Catholic Church by Martin Luther. Otherwise, the rest are mostly agnostic or irreligious with a noticeable community of Muslims, mostly from the huge Turkish and Middle Eastern communities at about 5%, as well as a few Jews, Buddhists, and Hindus rounding up the remainder 1%. To kind of get a feel of what it's like to be German, you kind of have to understand where they've come from. After World War II, they kind of had a lot of work to do. However, it wasn't until the mid-50s and early 60s that the Wirtschaftswunder or economic wonder happened 
happened to which almost everybody got to work. Basically, this guy envisioned and implemented a social market economy combined with free market capitalism alongside socialist policies that established fair competition in a welfare state. GDP increased by 80%, investments by 120%, labor forces were utilized to the maximum, things started to get better. In Germany, all children are corralled into general public schools until age 10 when they are given the option to enroll in three different types of middle schools. Gymnasium geared towards focusing on higher linguistic... This is what I love about European type... Um, ed I'm gonna let... Medic and science fields for universities. Realschule, uh I really want to talk about this. Um, I think that America could learn from this. America can learn from a lot of things. Uh, can learn from... I think that our school system... And this is just my opinion. Obviously, I'm one person. Someone else could have a completely different opinion, but these are my thoughts. I think that we we just sort of get people in a general education up until 12th grade and then throw them out into either go to college or you, or you pursue a job or whatnot, community college. And definitely my experience, I went to college, St. John's University in New York City, and I went into just like liberal arts. Um, I didn't really have, I hopped around majors. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I was just, you know, well, college is the logical next step after high school. And I just really didn't feel prepared. Again, this could be completely different for other people who took, you know, education more seriously in middle school and high school. But I think um, making this helps a kid think about what they want to do before before you know it, it's senior year and you, and you got to, you know, quick, quick think and either, you know, go to college, pursue a career or whatnot geared towards focusing on higher linguistic, mathematic, and science fields for universities, Realschule, a middle ground type of school, and Hauptschule, a school that is geared towards helping kids that seem to show promise in specific vocation or trades. Germany also has the largest music market in the EU and the third in the world after the US and Japan. They love preserving their heritage and culture through music and art. In fact, there are around 130 national orchestras mostly supported by public money, and artists get a 50% reduction in health insurance through a special type of offer in the legal system. One thing that still kind of supports supposedly maintains itself in Germany is the mindset of Vergangenheitsbewaltigung. Totally butchered that! Which kind of translates to a lingering sense of guilt from the past. Germans have reportedly some of the lowest levels of national pride, and unless if you're at a soccer game, chances are you will almost never see anyone holding a German flag or waving it in you guys must go crazy then when you can wave it. In any kind of like patriotic setting. It's weird, but it's kind of how things are. You monster! They've made great strides to move on from the past. No Is that true? Is that- oh. Nazi flags and Mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items to own in Germany, and they even have- so My big thing, American, is just, like if someone had this book- Move on from the past. Nazi- I'm not afraid to tackle these subjects, alright? It's- I think many people in America would see like, oh, that makes sense, but at the same time, I don't really like that you're telling me not to hold anything. And although this seems very obvious and very uh, logical, and I, I don't have, I, I can't really put myself in, in Germany's shoes, but the idea of not, of being illegal to hold any symbol is very, uh, sends up red flags, you know, although I, I can't really put myself fully in the German shoe, so to speak, so I get it. Nazi flags and Mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items to own in Germany, and they even have a rule, the Volkswertzung, which basically says you cannot talk trash by denying the past atrocities. Some people say this infringes on free speech, others say it's good because it solidifies truth. Otherwise, some notable Germans throughout history include Charlemagne, although he was a Frank, but eh, I guess it kind of counts. Albrecht, Dürr, David Friedrich, Gutenberg, Bach, Beethoven, Karl Benz, Albert Einstein, although Americans would like to claim that he moved to the US and became an American, Johannes Kepler, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Friedrich Schiller, Michael Schumacher, Alex von Humboldt, and of course Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels co-founded Marxism. <coughs> but one thing Germans do best would have to Commies. be diplomacy. No, all right. I love you all. Rick Engels co-founded Marxism. <coughs> but one thing Germans do best would have to be diplomacy. To this day, the German passport holds the most visa-free nations out of any other country in the world, just really? beating Sweden. Therefore, you can kind of conclude that Germany kind of knows how to relate to people. Let's find out how in the final round, level four. 
Germany knows how to make friends. They have over 220 diplomatic missions abroad and over 350 honorary consuls and have an incredibly high position of authority in the EU. Their closest African friend would probably be Namibia. As a former German colony way back in the 19th century, Namibia held on relations and to this day, German is still a recognized language in Namibia. Germans have been supporting and sharing ties both economically and ideologically for over a century. India and South Korea are really close friends in Asia. India supported both East and West Germany during the Cold War and after reunification, they were like, woohoo, even better. And Germany is to South Korea what Japan is to France. They love to piggyback off of each other's ideas and cultures, especially in the automotive industry. Many South Koreans were sent to Germany after the Korean War to work abroad and study, and Germans have been growing in fascination with visiting South Korea. The US is probably the closest ally outside of the EU. About 30% of Americans hey claim German heritage. And after World War II, the Marshall Plan allowed the US to I don't give post-war aid to Germany, which helped kickstart the economic recovery. Germany was a key figure in the formation of the State of Israel after World War II, which after the Holocaust left an obligation to invest in the building up of a Jewish community. Turkey is probably the closest Middle Eastern ally as the Turks make up the largest Asian demographic in Germany, although many of them may or may not also identify as Kurds. But since Kurds don't Hold have on, a state what? building up of a Jewish community, Turkey is probably the closest Middle Eastern ally as the Turks make up the largest Asian demographic in Germany, although many of them may or may not also identify as Kurds. But since Kurds don't have a state of their own, they usually go under Turkish passports when immigrating and are documented as such. Their best friends, however, would probably be literally all their neighbors. Topic the thing is, Germany time. is kind of like Bosnia and Herzegovina in which, by default, they kind of get friends based off of the regional alliances. Bavarians get along with Austrians, Baden-Württembergs get along with Switzerland, oh, cool. East Germany has good relations with the Slavic countries, the Rhine states love Belgium, Luxembourg, and France, and the North side loves the Netherlands and Denmark. France, though, is kind of like the trophy wife of Germany, as the two have had an angry start, but then eventually fell in love and worked together beautifully. The France is like trophy. the beautiful, flashy spokesperson for the EU that stands in the spotlight as Germany stands in the background, managing- I love how everyone- France is probably viewed as this too over here. Everyone just sees France as like the classy kind of, like, mm, country. I hope- I hope I didn't offend all the money and logistical work. In conclusion, although Germanic peoples you, have France. existed for thousands of years, an actual unified German state didn't appear until kind of recently, and the brief time that they've been around, they've kind of gone through some of the most intense, world-revolutionizing historical events possibly imagined. Yet, they've come out working hard and building their way up to become a world superpower. You gotta give it to them. There's something about the Germans. And with that, final boss level. I say the same thing about the Japanese. The Japanese are, were arguably more atrocious than even the Nazis were, which is saying a lot in their, like, human rights. You split in hairs there. There are two completely evil regimes in World War II, but they, after they were, um, conquered is not the right word, I don't think, beaten in the war, they have come back very strongly, and you can't deny that. Well, complete. Stay tuned. Another... Give it to them. There's something about the Germans. And with that, final boss level complete. Stay tuned. Another African state Germany has ties to, Ghana, is coming up next. Awesome. This channel is so great. That guy's great. Um, yeah, I'll, I'd love to react to more uh, geography videos or geography uh, now videos. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, join the Discord if you're not. If you want to learn about history, great time to join. I'm starting the uh, new series tomorrow. Yeah, cool. Learned a lot. Uh, see you guys next time.